worked 30 years in corporate America. Uh, I had a somewhat comfortable nest egg uh, to get me through my retirement years. And with the housing bust and the falling apart of Wall Street and uh, the markets going absolutely crazy, we lost huge amounts of our retirement. I work two jobs. Um, Why I'm, do you work two jobs? To pay for <laughs> to, to keep myself above water. One's not enough? No, one's not enough. No, I work part-time I work part-time at a doctor's office and that's still not enough. And then I work at a restaurant at night and that's still not enough. In terms of the Occupy Wall Street movement, uh, I think I can point to some cases in American history where such movements have worked. I, th I think back to uh, the Civil Rights Movement, and, and even though there were lives lost in that movement, um, you could say that the people who were out there um, in the streets um, marching and protesting did grab the attention of the country. There's great power in, in, in this type of, of movement. It, it, number one, wakes people up, if it does nothing else, and gets them talking and, and, and thinking about things. Um, another, another case, I believe, quite frankly, from my own time, where people in the streets it, it effected change was the protests against the Vietnam War. You were either for the war or you were against the war, and if you were against the war, uh, people would tell you to, you know, America love it or leave it, you know, well, why don't you get out of this country? You could sense that there was a them and a us mentality, and that's kind of what I think could happen here if it hasn't already happened here. It's uh, a lot of issues now, but would say the majority of, uh, of the people in this country are really fed up with being beaten down economically and watching um, their government being controlled by big business. Okay, my main reason for being out here is to support the people in Occupy Wall Street and the other Occupy movements around the country. It, you know, the, the real essence of all our problems is that we have an economic system that doesn't work and will never work um, because it's, it's funny money. Um, actually, there was an article by Noam Chomsky in an address he gave that where he basically said, across the world, it's basically becoming, um, what can I say, a feudal system. You've got the plutocracies and you've got the people. A group thing, I think that everyone <laughs> has different feelings from the far left to the far right and everybody in between. I think most of us recognize that uh, uh, what is happening right now isn't right. You know, the American dream is uh, if you work hard and, uh, you know, pay by, play by the rules that uh, good things are going to happen. And I think that uh, perhaps some of that dream is being lost right now. I think we have lost some important things in, in, in the battle of, of individual rights and the battle of, of, of the 99% of the people in this country whose wealth uh, all added together equals you know, the combined wealth of just a few. Um, that's a, that's, a, that's a, a very unstable situation, um, that kind of gross disparity of wealth. The central bankers creating money out of, you know, every, all of our money is based in debt. And I've been active politically in, you name it, but behind the scenes. I never could feel really passionate because I understood the problem was is that as we created more and more debt, it was going to be harder and harder on the average person. Well, I was, you know, pretty much the perfect candidate for them. I was young, you know, just turned 21. They gave me a credit card for like $5,000. I buy a couple of things. I pay the minimum amount. 
think my interest rate was like 30 or 40 percent, something crazy. And I ended up being late a couple times because they actually moved the date of when it was due. And so, yeah, seriously, like there's there are lawsuits right now in action over this kind of thing. And so I ended up owing all this money that I never spent and I still owe today. The reason I made this sign is because I felt that this was the spark of a whole new paradigm. This was the end of a model of, you know, go and conquer this and conquer that and print some more money. Right. And eventually all the power and the money's gone to the elites. I grew up at a time of prosperity in terms of, you know, people could have one job and support a family and buy a little house somewhere and their kids went to public school and, you know, it's not that way now. I think there's a lot more uncertainty and fear. I would love to see people become more compassionate. Uh, I think that would be the solution. Uh, I think uh, banks should become compassionate. They should look at people who uh, cannot pay their mortgage. And I know that in some cases the banks are uh, doing this, but not on a wide scale basis. I'm actually interested because you said you had a child on disability, right? I do. Uh -huh. how, is, how is that a challenge for you working with two jobs? Well, you have to have, um, you have to have uh, like private daycare. She goes to a, 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 I mean, she's very smart, but she's very little. She's had two heart operations since she was a year old. And I, so I have to have private daycare. She has to watch her diet, you know. I mean, there's so many special things and, you know, transportation back and forth to pulmonologists, to cardiologists, to, you know, allergists all around the Verde Valley. And, you know, I mean, even Phoenix and Flagstaff. And I, you have to take days off work. And, I mean, it sucks, basically. You know, and when you hear all these stories about, you know, everybody's getting bailed out because they're millions of dollars in debt, you know, it's like we are the 99% of people. The people who are out there um, putting that uh, notion in front of others are, are important people. And um, they, have, they have something to say, and I think we all need to listen. I still stand by my statement, and here's why. They might be frustrated with Wall Street and the bankers, but they're directing their anger at the wrong place. Wall Street didn't put in failed economic policies. Wall Street didn't spend a trillion dollars that didn't do any good. Wall Street isn't going around the country trying to sell another $450 billion. They ought to be over in front of the White House taking out their frustration. So I do stand by that. Congressman Paul, you've been... Congressman Paul, you've been critical of Governor Romney for, for holding fundraisers with, with Wall Streeters. Uh, do you think he understands what the protest is about? Do you understand? Well, I think uh, Mr. Kane has uh, blamed uh, the victims. Uh, there's a lot of people that are victims of this business cycle. We can't blame the victims, but we also have to point. I'd go to Washington as well as Wall Street, but I'd go over to the Federal Reserve. Uh, <laughs> They, they create the financial bubbles, and you have to understand that. You can't solve these problems if you don't know where these bubbles come from. But then when the bailout came, and supported by both parties, you have to realize, oh, wait, Republicans were still in charge. So the bailouts came from both parties. Guess who they bailed out? The big corporations, the people who were ripping off the people in the derivatives market. And they said, oh, the world's going to come to an end unless we bail out all the banks. So the banks were involved, and the Federal Reserve was involved. But who got stuck? Stuck. The middle class got stuck. They got stuck. They lost their jobs and they lost their houses. If you had to give money out, you should have given it to the people who were losing their mortgages, not to the banks.